Thanks for joining us and welcome to Roadmap 2019, where we interact with some of Nigeria's major players in its journey to next year's polls. I am Ladi Akiri Doluale. My guest on this edition of the program says he is not a religious bigot and only presented a consensus view when the federal government supported a law banning same-sex unions in Nigeria. He is also of the opinion that the anti-corruption war has not been fought with equity and fairness and will therefore not bring the desired results. Now please join us as we speak to a senior advocate of Nigeria, former minister for special duties, and now PDP presidential aspirant, Alhaji Kabiru Tanimu Turaki. Haji Taminu Turaki, thank you so much for your time. Welcome to Roadmap 2019. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Now, uh, your campaign seems to place a great deal of emphasis on youth development, the development of the youth. And in some ways, that is sort of unique amongst campaigns, generally speaking. Why is that that emphasis? Why are you having that emphasis? I think it's not about our making it a very significant issue as far as our com uh, campaign organization is concerned. But the trend globally now is that countries tend to have much more younger leaders. Leaders who will bring in a lot of dynamism in the art of governance in their countries. And because today the world is a global village, so whatever happens anywhere will naturally have effect everywhere in the world, and Nigeria is not different. So it's because of what had happened in France and other places that Nigerians themselves are saying, if countries that have developed democracies are beginning to realize and understand that there is need for much more younger persons to be brought in to take the mantle of leadership in those countries, then why should Nigeria be different? And so it is because of these sentiments that are developing that Nigerians seem to say, hallelujah, Turaki is here now. He's much more younger, he's very dynamic and courageous, and these are the kind of things that we want. And so because of this, wherever we go, you see that kind of uh, uh, un 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 unimaginable acceptance, particularly from Nigerian youths, particularly from students, and indeed, very educated people who feel that, look, the time is ripe now for Nigerians to begin to also make that paradigm shift. Paradigm shift from leadership that you could say is gerontocracy, leadership by older people, to get more younger, well-educated, astute, and dynamic leaders that will be able to begin to hit the ground running from day one. And that is where... We, we, we become relevant. And that is the age we have over and above all other aspirants that seem to be seeking for, for, for the ticket of PDP to, to contest the 2019 election. You talked about the youth and why that is now the trend. Yes. What are your reasons for wanting to be president? Well, uh, let me start by saying in the first place, that my coming into the contest is a call by a broad spectrum of the society, particularly leaders of our party. And it took me a lot of time to consult the critical leadership in the country, the traditional rulers, the religious leaders, the politicians, students and youth groups, civil society organizations, before I was convinced to say it is worth my while to also come into the contest. And that is why I'm here. So for me, it is not about any inordinate ambition of wanting to be president. It's about having to answer the clarion call because we are in a situation where the world is moving and moving fast. But in Nigeria, we are not even stagnated. We are retrogressing. And so unless something is done drastically to address this problem and address the tide, we might get into a situation where we are making progress backwards instead of making progress forward. Your party went through a very turbulent time. 
between the loss of the election, as a matter of fact, in the run-up to the 2015 election, mm. and then thereafter, uh, up until recently, there were two factions, there were court cases, multiple activities going on at the same time. And you played a frontline role in that. At that time, you became the chairman of the PDP ministers for us. Yes. Um, with benefit of hindsight now, could that problem have been avoided? I agree with you. But let me say first that in PDP, we've learned our lessons. The greatest tragedy that could befall any political party is to lose election after being in power for 16 years. That had happened to us. And we've learned a lot of lessons from that. And then came the issue of the leadership struggle. Somebody who had an agenda was brought in to implement an agenda of other people that are sponsoring him. And that agenda is to destroy the party. So that while we are trying to recuperate from the loss of 2015 election, that they never wanted us to have a chance of recollecting ourselves, coming together, and beginning to prepare for 2019 election. But those now, who brought, I'm sorry, those who yes. brought this person you're referring to, and I believe you're referring to Senator Adi Modu Sheriff, yes. those who brought him were members of the PDP. They were no, from outside. No, 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 no. You are missing the point. Anybody who will say that Ali Modu Sheriff was brought in by members of the PDP will have been missing the target. Ali Modu Sheriff, with a lot of respect, he's my friend, but he was planted on us. He was done so meticulously that people thought he was coming to add value. In any case, some of us know that he had no value to add. And that was why, without taking matters personally, and we are not personal, former ministers of the PDP sat down in an emergency meeting, and we looked at the whole situation, and we took serious accession to it. In the build-up, to the 2015 election, we knew the kind of problems we had. Because our party had within our fold people like Senator Ali Modu Sharif. And then people who are now trying to support him to become chairman of the party do not know his antecedents. But those of us who knew his antecedents and his brand and kind of politics said no. Not at this time when you are trying to bring people together. Not at this time when you are trying to strengthen, rebuild and rebrand the party. Do you need a person like him? We needed somebody who would be able to bring everybody together. And so we took exception. And then we, when we gave our reasons why we felt that Ali Modu Sharif should not become the acting chairman of the party at that time, even the board of trustees of the party agreed with us. But those who never knew him and that were supporting him, sooner the letter came to realize the kind of person he was and his brand politics. And we said, okay, look, what the former ministers were saying is correct, and we agree with them. Now, we brought you to conclude the tenure of uh, Muazu, yes. who himself was concluding the tenure of Alajiba Mangatuku. Yes. Okay, you have three months. Please finish these three months and go. And so he said no. He, he wanted, wanted to, to translate the handshake that was given to him into an embrace. And not only an embrace, he wanted a kiss. Because from concluding the tenure of Bamanga Tuku, which Maadu uh, uh, tried to conclude also, he wanted to become national chairman. And from becoming national chairman, he wanted to become the presidential flag bearer of the party in quick succession. And so people say, ah, so the former ministers were right, they were able to see beyond the facade and had warned us, and had warned us correctly. And so that was why the whole party came together to say, look, we will not allow this to happen to us. Nobody will take away our party. And we fought, and we fought well. But we fought decently. We fought decently. And because we, we all, everybody was, was on the same page, everybody was concerned. And so everybody keyed in to what the caretaker committee was doing with the support of other organs and tiers of authority within the party. And that is how we were able by the special grace of God, to overwhelm Ali Modu Sharif. And then we took over our party. And tell me, since Ali Modu Sharif left, had there been any crisis in PDP? No. Since Ali Modu Sharif left, had there been any other problem that had hampered on the progression in, in PDP? No. To the contrary, you see a lot of people coming into PDP today. 
A lot of people are coming back to PDP because PDP has now been rebranded. PDP has now been restructured. And PDP is poised to meet the aspirations of Nigerians. Let me put you on pause there. I will mm. return to the issue of people coming into the PDP, the whole issue of the gale of defections, the governors and uh, uh, National Assembly members in just a couple of moments.